Hello and welcome to our midweek service. This week we're commemorating VJ Day and remembering those who laid down their lives um, for us, for our tomorrow. And that's why I'm here in front of the memorial. Mike's going to be speaking to us a little bit later on. Um, so before we start, let's pray. Our Father, thank you for this opportunity to look back and reflect and say thank you for those who gave there today for our tomorrow and to look forward and long for that day when wars and pain and death uh, will be no more, will be things of the past, not even remembered. I pray you'll be with us during this service. And remind us of your great glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, today uh, we give thanks for the peace which followed nearly six years of war. We commemorate the lives of all those who died in armed conflicts as civilians. We remember the sacrifices made by so many at home and abroad. We hold before God places of war and violence today and the armed forces serving at this time, those they leave behind. And we pray in hope and faith for peace. Lord our God, our defence in trouble and our refuge from the storm Hear us as we remember and pray on this 75th anniversary of victory in Japan. Help us never to forget the sacrifices which won for us our freedom and bless your world with peace. For we ask it in the name of the Prince of Peace, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to sing our first song to that Prince of Peace who is also the King of Heaven now and forevermore. So uh, let's sing together. Well, thank you, Ian. Um, it's good that you're at the War Memorial. I did start my recording there, but it's just a little bit too noisy for a talk. So I've come back home. And we're looking at the uh, image of a memorial on a green screen. But very poignant and fitting that you should stand where you stood because that side of the memorial actually details the names of the 54 men from Cheadle who were killed 
in the Second World War. It also records the names of the eight local people who were killed in air raids during the war. I wonder how many of those 54 were killed in the Forgotten Army or maybe other Allied forces. The war in the Far East, which we particularly uh, recall today, VJ Day. Actually, VJ Day is on Saturday, but we're doing this on a Wednesday in advance of it. I'm going to speak for a few moments about why I think it's important we do still remember the war, particularly the war in the Far East today. And I'm then going to explain a little bit about the Kima epitaph, those well-known or perhaps not so well-known words, and then I'm going to lead us in some prayers. So first of the four reasons why I think it's important to remember the war. And firstly, insight or understanding. As Christians, we are concerned about all people. We're concerned about places. We're concerned about events. They matter to us because they matter to God. We work for what is good. We oppose what is evil. We remember in our prayers those in power. To paraphrase Karl Barth, the famous German theologian, actually Swiss theologian, um, we pray with the Bible in one hand and um, the newspaper in the other. Or we might say we pray with the Bible in one hand and the atlas of a history book in the other. We can't realistically be a Christian about understanding the world as it is, insight. Secondly, self-understanding. I don't think we can understand the people that we are without remembering the war, because in most cases, members of our family would in some way or other have been involved in it. Let me reach over and show you, um, if I can get it away from the reflection, uh, the medals of my father-in-law. David Robertson. He was in the RAF. He maintained uh, planes, including Spitfires. And amongst his five medals there in the middle, uh, in the red central band with the Starship Medal, is the Burma Star, because he was based in Singapore at one point. He wasn't a prisoner of war. He transferred over, got out somehow, and worked then in India. So that's part of my family's heritage. I'm sure you will have other similar stories to tell. But there's another form of self-understanding that's important, and that is to understand who we are as human beings. Um, I'm sure we'll all agree, or most as will, that the Second World War was a necessary war. Um, I'm sure we'll agree that the, uh, in this case, particularly the Japanese, were exceedingly cruel. Um, in fact, uh, if you were held in a German prisoner of war camp, you had a 2% risk of dying. In a Japanese camp, you had a 27% risk of dying. Pure evil, we might say. And yet, nevertheless, there is an ambiguity about war. Um, again, I imagine we would all perhaps reluctantly agree that the dropping of the two atomic weapons on Hiroshima and Nagasaki was necessary, sadly. Nevertheless, it says some painful things about our world when we get to that state. It would be naive to think, wouldn't it, that somehow all that was good was on our side and all that was evil was on the other side. As Alexander Solzhenitsyn said once famously, the line separating good and evil passes not through states, nor between classes, nor between political parties, but right through every human heart and through all human hearts. Almost uh, the identical sentiment to the Apostle Paul when he says that all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we don't meet to celebrate war, we simply meet today to commemorate those who died in it and to remember their sacrifice. That was then my second point, self-understanding. Thirdly, inspiration. Uh, there are many amazing stories of those who fought in the war and it's a great pleasure always to read about people who fought there to read their obituaries. Uh, the other day I was reading a sermon by uh, Bishop Nigel Stock. He was a Bishop of Stockport some years back. His uh, granddad fought in the uh, Far East 
and other members of his family too. And he gave an address on the 70th VJ day. It was televised. Anyway, in the address, he recalls the uh, story of Bishop Leonard Wilson, who was based in Singapore, was captured and interred in a notorious Changai prison. He was accused of being a spy within the camp and so was interrogated under torture. And this is what he said. In the midst of that torture, they asked me if I still believed in God. When by God's help I said I do, they asked me why God did not save me. By the help of the Holy Spirit, I said, God does save me. He does not save me by freeing me from pain or punishment, but he saves me by giving me the spirit to bear it. And Stock goes on to say that you have to read the whole passage to understand just how hard it was for Leonard Wilson to uh, forgive those who did these terrible things to him. The struggle he had with doubts and anger and despair. But he does say this, Leonard Wilson again. I looked at their faces as they stood around and took it in turn to flog. Their faces were hard and cruel and some of them were evidently enjoying their cruelty. But by the grace of God, I saw those men not as they were, but as they had been. Once they were little children playing with their brothers and sisters and happy in their parents' love. And it's hard to hate little children. One of the many inspiring stories, in fact, an inspiring Christian story from the Second World War and the war in the Far East in particular. Lastly, then, gratitude. And that brings us to the Kahima epitaph. Most of us will be familiar with battles from the Second World War, the Battle of Britain, El Alamein, Normandy, that sort of thing. But who's heard of the Battle of Kahima? In fact, who's heard of the Battle of the Tennis Court? But that's actually where one of the most important battles took place. A battle voted in 2013 at the British Army Museum, Britain's greatest ever battle. It took place in 1944 over the course of two months and Empire troops in Burma were trying to hold back a Japanese onslaught. Had the Japanese been successful, they would have been able to invade India and we would have been in deep trouble, deeper trouble than we already were. Uh, the battle raged, as I say, for those two months. It was around the tennis court, which uh, saw the bitterest fighting. But the stand that was taken there uh, symbolized the determination to hold on against Japanese violence and uh, imperialism. And after uh, the, the war, a memorial was erected, and on that memorial, the famous words attributed to John Maxwell Edmonds were placed. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. We are, aren't we truly grateful to those who fought in that war? And in fact, in particular, those who gave their lives. Well, it's not a sentiment that's uniquely Christian. Um, the Greek poet Simonides uh, wrote similar lines following the Battle of Thermopylae in 480 BC. But it is a sentiment that is particularly Christian because of course at the heart of our faith is a story of one who gave his life for us, our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul writes, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his power might become rich. And so uh, as we uh, go through the prayers, as we later on have our dedication, let's uh, this day be filled with enormous gratitude to those who fought, but also God, to God himself for all he's given us and all he means to us. And so the prayers. Trusting the promise of God and with faith in his mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Let us give thanks for the selfless and courageous service and sacrifice of those who brought peace to the Far East and so to the world. And for the good example they've given us, let us bless the Lord. And if you're able to do so, please respond. Thanks be to God. We pray for the nations still devastated by war, for their people and their leaders. 
and for those who suffer the effects or memories of past wars, for veterans, for those who mourn, and for all innocent victims whose lives have been shattered by the cruelty of others, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us give thanks to those who work for peace and liberty throughout the world, for Her Majesty's armed forces, for all who strive to bring an end to injustice and oppression. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray for those in our own day who've grown weary or lost hope as a result of violence or terror, for all refugees and displaced people, and for those who seek to address the cause of discord and distrust. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us give thanks for the reconciliation of former enemies, for the flourishing of goodwill between them, and for the many blessings we enjoy as a result of the sacrifice which have made for peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray for the young people of our own day and for all who will shape the future of the world, that they may be inspired by those who've gone before them to serve as they have been served. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so now we listen or sing that great hymn of encouragement, Abide with me.
uh, we're going to have um, a short active dedication so I'm going to say a few words and then the refrain with the help of God we will will appear on the screen and that's for you to say together at home or wherever you're watching this so uh, we fought for peace that the world might never again know such violence and destruction will you work for peace and reconciliation in your homes and communities and promote peace throughout the world with the help of God, we will. We fought for justice, that the scourge of prejudice and oppression might never again take root in our societies. Will you work for a world in which hatred and injustice never have the final word and where all people can flourish with dignity and hope? With the help of God, we will. We struggled so that the whole human family might know goodwill, security and freedom. Will you always acknowledge how precious are the gifts that God has entrusted to us and exercise the freedoms and responsibilities that you have with gratitude and humility? With the help of God, we will. May Almighty God, who has given us the will to undertake these things, bless us with the strength to perform them. Amen. And final blessing before we sing again. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth and all people, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen because this is a special day, we're going to end with the National Anthem. So uh, wherever you are, uh, let, uh, please be upstanding and we'll sing. Thanks.